ancient viruses hidden in DNA may promote cancer development. Endogenous retroviruses are viruses that infected humans thousands of years ago. The traces of these infections are still visible in our genome today. For a long time, the genetic material of these retroviruses was thought to be junk DNA, but in new research, scientists have shown that when endogenous retroviruses are reawakened, they can play a key role in the development of cancer. The research also suggests that silencing some of them can improve the effectiveness of treating the disease. It is believed that about 8% of the modern human genome consists of sequences of endogenous retroviruses HERV, human endogenous retrovirus, which infected our ancestors thousands of years ago. Their genetic material was passed on to subsequent generations and permanently incorporated into the human genetic material. For a long time, scientists believed that this ancient viral DNA was inert and had no significant function in the body. It is also unable to cause any harm. However, in new research, Scientists from the University of Colorado in Boulder have shown that endogenous retroviruses contribute to the development of cancer, and their silencing can increase the effectiveness of anti-cancer therapies. The results and description of the research were published in the journal Science Advances. Among the approximately 20,000 genes that serve as the building blocks of life are also DNA molecules left by viruses that infected our ancestors in ancient times. Our study shows that today's diseases may be largely due to these ancient viral infections, which until recently few researchers paid attention to, said Edward Schwamm from the University of Colorado in Boulder. The research shows that about 8% of the human genome consists of endogenous retroviruses that slipped into the cells of our evolutionary ancestors. Over time, they penetrated sperm, eggs and embryos, which resulted in their genetic material being passed on to subsequent generations. In May of this year, a paper came out showing that some of these retroviruses increase susceptibility to mental disorders such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and major depressive disorder. The new study found that endogenous retroviruses can act like switches that turn on nearby genes. Some of these may contribute to our immune response to modern viruses, such as COVID. Schwang, along with Atma Ivanchevic, investigated the role of endogenous retroviruses in cancer. They analyzed published data sets on the epigenomes of 21 different types of cancers. They found that a particular lineage of endogenous retrovirus known as LTR10, which infected primate ancestors about 30 million years ago, showed surprisingly high levels of activity in several types of cancer, including lung and colon cancers. Further analysis of dozens of patients with colon cancer showed that LTR10 was active in about a third of them. When the researchers used the gene editing tool CRISPR to cut out or silence sequences where the retrovirus was present, they found that key genes known to promote cancer development also disappeared. Experiments in mice showed similar results. When the researchers removed the LTR10 switch from cancer cells, key genes that promote disease development, including one called XRCC4, also turned off, and the treatment had better efficacy. We know that cancer cells express a lot of genes that shouldn't be turned on, but no one really knows what turns them on. It turns out that many of the switches come from ancient viruses, Chuang said. The authors note that this one family of retroviruses alone regulates as many as 70 cancer-related genes in the so-called MAP kinase pathway, a cellular pathway that is adversely reprogrammed in many cancers. Different families of endogenous retroviruses likely affect different pathways that promote different cancers. 
Chuang said that while these viruses are likely an underappreciated source of genetic influence on all types of cancer, the study does not show that they cause cancer. He says that the cancer wakes them up, giving them the opportunity to activate disease-promoting processes to help keep it alive. He also suspects that as human cells age, their defenses weaken, allowing ancient viruses to reawaken and contribute to other health problems. The origins of disease in the cell have always been a mystery. Endogenous retroviruses are not the whole story, but they may be a big part of it, Chuang said. The first successful heart transplant made of titanium. A 58-year-old from the US has become the first person in the world to have his ailing and failing heart replaced with a heart made of titanium. The device uses magnetic levitation maglev, technology, the same technology used in high-speed trains. The titanium organ is a temporary solution and is intended to give more time while waiting for a real heart transplant. The titanium heart was developed by BIVACOR. The company claims that their heart is strong enough to keep a man alive even during exercise. In addition, its size is small enough for the titanium organ to fit most men and women. The two-chamber device is the size of a fist and is virtually indestructible. It is resistant to corrosion and mechanical wear. The titanium heart does not beat but it can pump blood for many years. In its construction, scientists have eliminated almost all moving parts. All in order to make it less unreliable. The device uses magnetic levitation technology, the same technology used in high-speed trains. Its only moving part is a magnetically suspended double-sided rotor with left and right blades placed in two separate pump chambers. Maglev technology enables pulsatile blood pumping through rapid rotor cycles. The device can pump blood in the so-called small and large circulation. In the large circulation, it pumps highly oxygenated blood from the heart to the rest of the body, we are talking about oxygenated blood. In the small circulation, it pumps deoxygenated blood returning from the entire body to the lungs where gas exchange takes place, the blood gives off carbon dioxide and takes in oxygen. The entire device is powered by a small, external, portable controller. Work on the titanium organ took many years, but the artificial heart finally made it into the chest of a living patient with end-stage heart failure. The device was implanted at Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center in the Texas Heart Institute. The surgery was without complications. Three days after implantation of the titanium organ, the patient was free from the ventilator. On the seventh day after the surgery, he was able to walk 150 meters. In total, the man lived with the titanium heart for eight days. In the meantime, a donor was found and the artificial organ was replaced with a real heart. I am incredibly proud to witness the successful first implantation of our artificial heart in a human, says by VACOR founder Daniel Timms. This achievement would not have been possible without the courage of our first patient and his family, the dedication of our team and our experts at the Texas Heart Institute, he adds. Currently, the best treatment option for people with severe heart failure is a transplant, but a heart is not always available in a timely manner. Artificial hearts are a way to extend and improve the quality of life for transplant eligible patients who are at risk of dying while waiting for a donor. No one really knows how long the titanium device will last in humans. In Bivacker's lab, a similar artificial organ has been spinning for four years. The company has received FDA approval to implant its organ in five patients with life-threatening heart failure who are eligible for a transplant and are waiting for an organ. Heart failure affects at least 26 million people worldwide. 
fewer than 6,000 heart transplants are performed globally each year.